Hello, and welcome to this episode of the On Track Whiteboard series. Today, we're going to be talking about crosstalk, what it is, why you should care, and some ways to avoid it. Now, you may be thinking that you don't need to worry about crosstalk because the clock speeds you're dealing with aren't that fast. But you'd be wrong. It actually has nothing to do with the clock speed at all and everything to do with the rise time of your signal. And let me explain why. It has to do with Fourier series. Take a look at this square function here. In order to recreate that, we have to use Fourier series. And what Fourier series are is the superposition of sines and cosines of different weights and frequencies in order to recreate a periodic function. Take a look at this animation here of this Fourier series. At first, it looks like a sine wave. But as we increase in order, it looks more and more like a square wave. And as we go higher in order, we go higher in frequency. And so to recreate a very good looking square wave, we have to go to very high frequency. And this is why everything needs to be thought of as high frequency, because you have these high frequency elements right here. Now, with that, you have to start thinking about, um, you know, waves, propagation, um, signal integrity, impedance matching, EMI, and crosstalk. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So there's two types of crosstalk. There's capacitive and inductive, and also odd and even mode. And that's just out of phase and in phase. When you're out of phase, actually, let me take one step back. What capacitive crosstalk is, is vertical coupling of the uh, electric fields between two conductors or traces. So these would be on separate layers. So odd mode, when they're out of phase, you have a higher potential difference between these two traces. And due to that potential difference, you have higher capacitance and higher capacitive crosstalk. Even is um, the other way around. These are at very similar potentials. So the capacitance is much less. Now, in order to, I guess, a solution for this, if this happens in your design, is to have the traces on separate layers run orthogonal to each other. So let's say on the top layer, you want to have traces going north, south. And on the adjacent layer, you want to have it going east, west. Because when you, what you really, or when you really run into trouble, is when you have these two traces o overlapping, running parallel to each other. That's bad, because that's when you're going to get a lot of coupling of the electric field. And you don't want that, because that's you're going to you know, run into problems. So let's go on to inductive crosstalk. Whereas capacitive crosstalk is coupling of the electric field, inductive crosstalk is coupling of the magnetic fields. And I know we're in inductive crosstalk, but let me take one step back one more time. You can also have a capacitive crosstalk on the same layer if they're next to each other. But when you're in this configuration, inductive crosstalk will over, overpower, overshadow the effects of capacitive crosstalk. So you don't really need to worry about it. This is what you need to worry about at that time. So inductive crosstalk. Again, we have odd mode, even mode, in phase, and out of phase. When it's in phase, the current is going in the same direction. And the inductance goes up. Your inductive crosstalk goes up. And you can see they're sharing the same magnetic field here. Not good. And if we go to odd, out of phase, the current is going in opposite direction. And the magnetic field kind of cancels each other out if, by using the right-hand rule. You have one going this way other going this way, and the fields kind of cancel each other out, which is actually um, one of the solutions you can implement when routing, is kind of have the signals going in opposite directions. Um, another solution for inductive crosstalk is to separate your traces. And the reason being is if you can get these fields farther apart, where they're not interacting, you don't have to worry about crosstalk because the fields aren't interacting. So separate those out. And the rule of thumb for that is to have the gap between the traces be three times the width of the trace. So for instance, if this trace is two mils, you'd want the gap between them edge to edge be six mils. And 
that's really what I wanted to talk about today in terms of crosstalk. Um, of course, crosstalk is a, a ex very large, expansive topic, and we could go on, and I'm sure we will in other videos. But for right now, that's what I wanted to mention. Um, most of the advice was in terms of routing. Um, one thing I would mention, it's not just routing, it's also placement. Um, for instance, you wouldn't want to place uh, high switching pins next to a sensitive line, things like that. Um, but if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time on the OnTrack Whiteboard series. Thank you.